Alright everybody, it's Andrew here. Um, I've received me HP Catalyst switch. Oh no, sorry, HP Catalyst, sorry, it's Cisco Catalyst, I was looking at the box. Um, I've received me, me Cisco Catalyst 2950 switch uh, from the AB auction a couple of years back. It's going to be part of the Cisco lab what I'm going to build to train myself for CCNA and also part of my home network. Uh, this video is basically just an unboxing, just to confirm there's no damage to us. As you can see, it's all around the box. There's, uh, as you can see, visibly, there's no damage. This is, this is as and when I'm receiving it. This is mainly for, this unboxing part is mainly for my reference, just in case there's any problems with the parts. As you can see, there's nothing physically damaged. It's probably got minimal packaging on it, but um, we'll see what's like. So just to, that was just to prove it's in a good condition from the seller. What I'm going to do now is just open it up. So I don't actually have, I don't have, like, have any experience with Cisco equipment, um, but obviously with me it's a case of learn as I buy something and then learn it or learn it as I go, and then I can develop my skills from there. Two. I haven't got any knife so I'll just use this one. A steak knife. So there we go, the box is now opened. Uh, internally, if we look inside, obviously, I know it's only the switch I wanted because obviously uh, I've got a power cable somewhere, so I'll put it But the second part of the video is just mainly going to be for. Um, for testing out the equipment to make sure it works well. Actually, thank you to the seller because I didn't realise it came with a power kill. I thought he wasn't going to include one, so I just noticed he's provided me with one. So, got my power cable, standard uh, 3 pin 240 volt, another one of these. I've probably got a couple of them lying about now. I've got some rack mount, uh, rack mount connectors, so uh, when I get my uh, rack out and cover up, cover up. Thank you for that as well. and just to see what's inside. And then the main switch itself, which I purchased, you can see we've some particular equipment. As you can see, I'll just uh, put the rubber shelf away, so to speak. Actually, this actual uh, switch I purchased as well was previously used in um, school, so I'm expecting it to come with a slight bit of uh, damage on the box, but I'm not really fussed because it's only from your home network. So, as you can see, equipment wise, it's in uh, good condition. I'm expecting usage marks, but to be fair, this is actually in really good condition. I mean, there's a slight mark there, but I'm not really fussed about that. It's mainly for reference, but there's no visible damage on us. We have our console connector at the back. Oh, sorry, we have our console connector, cooling fan, uh, DC input for remote power supply, and obviously our standard power supply for us. 24 port 10 100 switch um, with two gigabit interfaces, namely there and there. And uh, we'll use this for our home network. So, overall, yeah, it's a good piece of equipment. And um, thing with switches as well, the, this doesn't have an actual power supply on it. So, yeah, power button, it's basically just powered up straight as soon as you plug it in. And obviously, I can choose me more here. So, overall, a really nice piece of equipment. I'll be looking forward to using it. And, uh, Props the seller for a good piece of equipment. I'll do a test on it by hooking it up to the power supply and seeing what it's like. And uh, we'll go from there. So, yeah. Alright, hello everyone again. It's Andrew. Um, this is a live connection. I've got the power supply. Uh, you may notice on the switch I've actually connected up the rack mount connectors. Mainly just because I wanted to... Uh, Make sure they're not lost. This is a live connection, I haven't actually tested it yet. Uh, so you can see our power port there, so we'll plug it in. It should power up straight away, I think. It needs a bit cleaning on the fan line, the fan's a bit manky, but whatever. Sounds like the fan needs replacing on the bar looks good, but as long as it's got its functionality for uh, 
price I paid for I'm not really fussed. It cost me eighteen pounds pound in total for the switch and the postage. So I'm not gonna complain. You can see on the switch I've got my uh, activity light there. System's powering up. So it's uh, should be good to go, so it's a good switch. Um, and obviously I'll need to get a console cable to actually remote into it, but other than that, fine piece of equipment, it's working fine and uh, good review, thumbs up for the eBay seller and I'll uh, post them some nice feedback. Next video you'll see from me, I'll be logging in the switch and doing some basic configuration from your home network. Alright, uh, obviously we've done the initial unboxing of the switch and powered up so we know it does work. We haven't actually tried connecting to the switch yet or doing any remote administration. The reason I bought this is partly because obviously I want to switch from my home network but as well also is I do want to obtain a CCNA or CCMP at some point so this is a worthwhile investment. I'll be buying a few more to build me on Cisco lab. Um, something I never actually bought which I've decided to buy as well, I've just bought off eBay is one of these. Basically it's a, a, con a console switch and uh, what it does is it allows you to carry out remote administration of the switches or you can use a Cisco um, I think it's something like a Cisco management server but what you've got is I'm using instructions on Cisco's website here as well basically when you're connecting to uh, the switch you have an old it's best to use an old uh, PC like Windows XP what I'm using here it's just an old laptop I've powered up and what I'm going to do is open up a hyper terminal connection as you can see here, and uh, I'm going to create a connection called Cisco Catalyst to provide some administration of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Catalyst. So there we go, right? So we'll just ignore our shite. I'm going to connect using COM port 1, I think it is. Alright, now the information on Cisco's website is Combo one it's it uses a DB9 serial connector. It's got a rare was it? It's got a female connector there and a male connector on the rear. So it's I'm just gonna connect so we have a data bits of we have nine six hundred connection board rays, eight data bits, we have no parity, one stop bit, and it says to use none for your flow control. So I'll apply that. And obviously it's just connected at the moment, but what I need to do now is to hook up me console cable. So, try and do this one handed. The reason I've got the switch off at the moment is I don't actually know much about Cisco switches if the when you first connect using Hyper Terminal, if uh, you need them powered off. I don't think it would be, but I'm doing it just to make sure. So, what we'll do is probably end up getting this laptop shut down more than that. It's just a scruffy laptop as well, so I need to clean it. But there we go, serial connector. Connect to the rear serial port. I'll just switch my light on. There you have it. You can see at the back there's a serial port here. I'm going to connect this one, just basically plug it in. Also, the information I read on um, a couple of reviews is not to use the ones without without these thumb screws here, otherwise, you might get a dodgy connection. Bum, bum, bum. I'm doing it anyway. Do it. The actual cable itself, by the way, it only, um, it only cost me. Uh, £1.80 off eBay. It was just a general cable I bought from a seller. Does the job at least, I'd imagine. Find out in a few minutes. So, okay, we've got our hyper terminal there. And obviously, we're going to plug it into the remote administration port of the server, which is there. And that's plugged in now. Um, the power cable. Plug it in. Drop something valuable on the floor there. Power cable, basically power up the switch. And um, there is a bad, there is a bad fan on this switch, but uh, I'm not too fussed because it, they can be replaced. So it's, but at the end of the day, for 18 pound, I'm not really going to complain that much. I'll find a bloody power cable port. All right, so you can, as you can see, the switch is now powering up. So there's our hyper terminal window with a bit of luck when it powers up we should see it. there we go so obviously it's powering up now it's picking up the shit off the floor okay so it's initializing the flash fs 
compiled Wednesday the 20th of the 2nd by Antonio. Antonino, sorry. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. All Barnshire's initial configuration dialogue. Mm. Yes, I guess. Oh, never mind. Or is it in the boot cycle again? <laughs> Alright, so it's, it's whoever's done it looks like the seller's actually wiped it for us, so I'll, I'll type in type in yes on the configuration dialog, right, so I've never actually configured the Swiss Cisco switch before, so I'm learning as I go here. So we've typed in yes. Uh, at any point you may enter a question mark for help. Use control C to abort configuration dialog at any prompt default settings are in square brackets. Base management setup only requires enough connectivity for management of the system. Extended setup will ask you for com to configure each interface in the system. Would you like a basic? Would you like to end a basic management setup? I'm going to say yes for the moment because I can play about with everything there. So basic management will just be the switch IP address, probably or something like that, and the host name. So uh, we'll call it AGH29. 50L code switch. Do do. So, this enable secret is a no, the enable secret is a password used to protect access to privileged exec and configuration modes. This password, after end, it becomes encrypted in the configuration enable. And after end, enable secret. Right. So I've got a new password now. So go fuck yourself, anyone who's looking. So we'll go do. It does actually give you the password on the screen. Actually, sorry. What I'll do is, because it's my switch, I'll just change it to password. Give it a basic one. Fuck it. Right. Uh, so the enable password is used, but you do not specify the enable secret password with some other devices and some boot So we'll call this one password again. Just keep it nice and simple for the configuration at the moment. Alright, please choose the password that is different from the enable single password. Well, we'll call it Cisco then. Right, the virtual terminal password is used to protect access to the root or over network interface. Alright, so you can actually connect it using this cable um, or you can use a network interface. So in the virtual terminal password, we'll enter my own protected one. I share one because you can see it when it goes up on the screen. Come to think of it, uh, we'll call it. We'll just say Andrew Hope for it. Configure SNMP network management. Mm, yes. Community stream public. Do, 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 do. So this is all important information by the looks of it. 24 ports which uh, enable an uh, interface name used to connect to the management network from the above interface summary. Uh, fine. Mm, say a percentage, no. Alright, we'll say help. We'll call it uh, fast Ethernet. Configuring interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. Configure IP in this interface. Uh, no. Would you like enable plus? Would you like enable as a cluster command switch? No. Uh, it's basically. Um, I'd, I'd basically imagine this function, the cluster command, is where if you have 10 or 15 switches or something like that, you use remote administration of this one to control everything. But that's the Cisco management software anyway. Right, so. The following configuration script was created. So I've got my host name, my enable secret password, which was password, and equal password, which is Cisco, and um, password was Andrew Hope, and the community public. So we've got all the basic configuration details. Da, 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 da. Let's just say more. Get rid of all this shite. And what's going to happen? Is the switch going to boot up after this, or what? And there's two gigabit Ethernet ports as well. 
So go to the IS command prompt without saving this config, return back to the setup without saving this config, save this configuration to MV RAM and exit, so we'll choose 2. And now it should save it to the RAM, so the software should boot, it should build up configuration, so I cannot need a piece of it anymore. Uh, line protocol on internet interface change state down, it just means it's off. Because uh, there's no connection, I imagine, press return to get started. Uh, was it start FS or something at the command? Alright, never mind. So, create attempting access list, reset, da, 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 show assist that telnet trace route where. Login is going here, access enable, the stack connections. Alright, so, I'm off, what I'm going to have to do is we know the basic function of the switch works now, does power roll. Um, I'm probably going to have to fart around until I can actually understand this thing a bit better, but other than that, the general overview of the switch works, I bought it for £18, pound, uh, good investment. We have 24 ports with 2 gigabit Ethernet ports. Um, it's going to help us develop the experience within the Cisco network and obviously it provides me with 24 ports for me or my T setup for connectivity because I'm, obviously I've only got one in the feed in this room at the moment so I'll configure the ports and play after that. So obviously this is a quick video over, it's me or my T setup completed and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. If you like this video please remember to rate, subscribe or comment.